Okay, uh, this tutorial we'll go, we're going to have a look at um, geotangent style domes. Uh, I was asked to um, make do a design for a dome. Uh, someone sent me a picture, and, and I believe it was the space plates dome in Bristol. Um, what I'll do is I'll drop a link in the description so you can have a look at uh, what that came out as. I don't normally cop uh, do copies of people's designs, but I thought it was an interesting. Um, sort of uh, idea so I, I did a bit of work on um, producing domes with basically hexagon panels that start on the equator quite large and then move uh, smaller and smaller uh, and I'll show you a couple of ways that we can do that what we did first was we put a 24 sided polygon that's the disc on the base and we added um, hex a ring of regular hexagons around that, but you can see that there's a space in between each, in between each um, regular hexagon, and we're going to fill that in with another row now. So you're getting this staggered row. One hex, the next row up is dropped inside the uh, the, un the next row down, so that it's it, they're not stacked on top of each other. They kind of stagger the way up. Um, this isn't going to work this way because what I'm doing is I'm just um, filling the space in whatever the space there is in between each hexagon uh, and and making half a hexagon copying it and rotating it round copy that rotate it round uh, so each hexagon is symmetric uh, left and right and top to bottom uh, but this isn't going to work because as we're proceeding up the uh, dome it's getting less spherical and more pointy hatty um, so we'll, sh we'll I'll do another little bit and show you that there you go you can see that it's not really spherical we need another way to do this I'm going to do this in exactly the same way by making a ring of hexagons but the only difference is I've added this um, vertical disc uh, and what that'll do is that'll give me um, some sort of guideline to work to so that if I'm making it spherical uh, it, each point should be lie roughly along that disc uh, you can see the first one's out to start with um, we're making a component of that now and we'll copy it around in all the positions um, but you can see that it's it's uh, as we add the, the next layer, it's going to just do the same thing. It's going to be, become less spherical. Uh, so to fix that, what we have to do is we have to adjust uh, not this blue layer that I've just finished, but the next layer down, and then redraw the blue layer. Uh, it's that line at the top there is too long. We need to make that shorter. And uh, to be honest, all I did with this was I uh, did a bit of trial and error, uh, snipped bits off here and there. We, it's, we're still working. It's just like cutting paper with scissors, to be honest. We made it uh, both sat, brought the both edges in a little bit, and we uh, it still wouldn't. It's still not really going to pull it in spherical. We can check again with our pattern by doing that. Um, so then, what we do is we make some more adjustments. Uh, we'll look, you can lower the top so what you what you tend to do is you have to make the top more squat and narrower at the top to force it into a spherical type shape I'm still um, tinkering with this to try and get it uh, to make the next row it's getting all the time it's getting closer um, but you can kind of tell when you bang on uh, I'm just going to snip a little bit off here, cut the top down a little bit more. Um, and get that right. Uh, and try it again. And basically that's the process. Is It's trial and error. Uh, you're trying to line things up with that disc. You're going to end up with an approximately spherical shape. But it's pretty, everything's done. Trial and error. Uh, there's no mathematical way to do this. You're just doing it um, freestyle really. You can kind of tell when you've got it right. Um, this is the, the last bit of tweaking I have to do on here. 
pulling the shoulders in it's it's an either cut down the top or pull the shoulders in type method here and that's pretty much the uh, the, the only two options you have to make this next row fit um, and what we do is we, we just continue with that process uh, draw the next one again as we copy it and rotate it the tops exactly the same as the bottom and it's the top piece that we have to adjust uh, you can see straight away that it's starting to come out um, and what you have to do is you have to edit the hexagon layer below it uh, to get the next one above that to fit properly we'll uh, put another row in and then I'll continue adjusting these and show you um, the next stage I'll probably skip on a good bit to be honest Okay, you can see that I've uh, done a, I've finished the hexagons and I've put holes in. I've, I've leapt a bit forward because uh, we haven't got all night to look at this. Um, so you can see that we have our upright hexagon. Next one with a thin top. Next one with a thin and shortened top. And we continue up like this, getting uh, smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, until we we uh, instead of putting a hexagon on this very top one, we just go and put a half hexagon, and then we can fill the hole in with a big big um, a big piece. Uh, that's how the, the their design works anyway. Uh, what we do from this point is I've uh, I'll show you is we select obviously uh, the whole lot, and we rescale. But only in this direction. Now you can up, you can upscale and downscale uh, any amount you want, and the uh, all the hexagons remain playing out, which is quite handy because you can you can literally uh, make it really uh, tall that way, which is cool. Um, or you can make it low. And what what they've done in this one is they've compressed it. So we compress it down. Uh, we're going to go fifty percent by the look of it. Uh, Okay, right, and what I've done next is I've pre half this. Let's uh, just change the window here and then get uh, components. Uh, empty info, I think, is what we want, and we'll just move that to layer three, setup three, sorry, to, dis to make it disappear. Right, what we have is half now. Uh, I've cut the door in just by cutting, I'll show you on this end, uh, cut, cut this in half. Cut that in half and you're left with the door. You can probably guess what we do next. We give it a spin on the green axis. 90 degrees. And that's how we produce the, uh, the basic shape. Let's just have a look back at our original. And it's got a pointy top door, uh, and that's the space plate design. And the problem with that is, let's spin around and have a look at our components for to build this dome. And uh, there's absolutely a mass of uh, panels. Here we go. This is our laid out. Um, get rid of the shadows. This is our. All the different panels you're going to need to manufacture to make this. Let's give them a count: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. A left and a right hand door one, uh, twelve, thirteen, and the centre one, fourteen different pieces. Uh, to my mind, that's an awful lot of uh, parts to make what would be really um, a fairly uh, simple structure it's not that big um i mean a, a geodesic dome could probably get away with um plenty three parts and we've got 14 different parts in that and uh, there's issues with joining it together um there is a better way and let me just show you that now Right, we've uh, I've got another version here. 
Uh, if we look at the hexagons, these hexagons are joined uh, edge to edge. The other hexagons were joined um, with this, with the um, across here. So that that line there was the uh, equator line. So what we've done, we've rotated the each hexagon um, thirty degrees. And uh, what's that's what that's done is let me just show you a better position. Is uh, we had fourteen different uh, panels on the on the uh, space plates design. On this one, we've got one in the center, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight different uh, hexagon shapes on this one, which is a, a, a much uh, easier uh, way of building than having fourteen different ones to build. Uh, if we look at uh, squashed it down again and uh, it looks pretty much the same the difference with the door is you would uh, cut this panel here and here and you'd have a although you have slants on the door you've got a flat top door instead of a peak top door uh, you can also stretch it long ways and make a rugby ball shape now if you were trying to make this shape with uh, geodesics um, it would be really complicated because you, you you can't this has got exactly the same number although we've stretched it we've stretched each panel each panel is still flat uh, but we've stretched it this direction and you can st stretch that as much as you want uh, and you're not adding any more unique panels to the design so uh, that would be my solution would be to go with the nine the nine different ones which is still a lot uh, but it's not as bad as 14 Anyway, I'll leave that with you. Um, what I'll probably do is I'll probably um, make a link. Have a look in the description. I'll make a link uh, to some files. I'll probably just give this away because I wouldn't really use it for anything. I've got a couple of SketchUp files uh, and some plans if ever anybody's interested in ever making one. Um, and I'll make them available uh, in a link on the description box. Uh, cheers for watching. Uh, subscribe if you like these videos and want to see.